Uh, government announced last night that they were looking to uh, apply for leave to to go to Privy Council. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to give us an update? Um, certainly, I'm happy to do so. Um, I recognize that this issue is a very difficult issue uh, for a number of Bermudians, and it's something that is incredibly emotional on both sides of the debate. The only thing that I would say to the Bermudian people is that we were elected um, on a particular mandate, and that mandate uh, stated that we would provide same-sex couples with uh, legal rights that were equivalent to marriage, and that is what we did with the Domestic Partnership Act. And we are proud to be the first Caribbean overseas territory to do that. Uh, however, uh, that particular action, which was done here in Parliament, uh, was met with challenges by the courts. And so there are some very important constitutional questions which have been raised regarding uh, the authority of Parliament and different authorities. And what we are going to do is I think that all persons will recognize that for this particular issue to be fully and finally addressed and put to bed, it needs to go into the highest court of the land so that it can be finally decided and settled. Uh, for, so for that, um, and for those particular reasons, the government has decided uh, that we've, seek, leave, we've sought leave to appeal. Um, if we are granted such, we'll be filing the appeal at a future, case, uh, future stage, and we hope that at the settlement of this issue, that the Bermudian public can then move on. This topic has bounced between Parliament and the courts for a while now. Mm -hmm. If it goes as far as the Privy Council and the Privy Council rules in favor of the Court of Appeals last decision, are we at the end of the work? Um, I, it is my understanding, and I'm not a uh, lawyer, it is my understanding that the Caribbean Council is the final um, and supreme uh, court of jurisdiction uh, for Bermuda. And so from that particular perspective, I do believe that that's where this particular issue will end. But I think, as I said, there is important constitutional issues. The government was elected with a particular mandate. The government elected and carried out that mandate in Parliament. And some of those mandates from Parliament have been struck down by the courts. So it is very important that these particular items be deliberated. And it can apply to many different things. But I think that when we talk about living and existing inside of a democracy and making sure that the people's will is carried through, I think that is the question which we'll test. So I believe that the Attorney General uh, will be able to far more uh, far better speak to this particular issue than I, but I'm speaking to it from the plain and simple political fashion, that this is a challenging issue, but the only way that this challenging issue is going to be resolved, in my view, is if it goes to the highest court in the land. The exact same thing that happened in the United States, the exact same thing that's happened in many other countries, will follow its process here, and at the end of it, it will be settled, and then we can move on. Questions have been raised recently about the investigation in child and family services. You were able to share some information this morning. Can you share it with us? Mm -hmm. Yes, during Premier's question time today, there was a question raised by the opposition leader about the status of this particular investigation. I updated him that the status of this investigation is ongoing. Um, it is covered, it is being done under the Public Service Commission regulations. Clearly, we're dealing with internal personnel matters, which cannot be shared um, externally. They are not even known to me. I just know that the investigations are ongoing. And once there's any recommendation which will come from any department, that recommendation will go to the head of the public public service, uh, Dr. Derek Benz, and if there's any adjudication or any decisions that are made after that, I'm sure that they will be announced to the public. In, in the sitting this morning, you touched on uh, some jobs being created in the FinTech arena. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an update on Absolutely. There was a question that came during Premier's question time regarding uh, the amount of jobs which have been created in FinTech. And when I speak about FinTech, I always want to be clear that just like our insurance industry was not built in one year, neither will our fintech industry be built in one year. I am not in any way, shape, or form holding this out to be a third economic pillar, but what I do believe is that it can serve as an enhancement to what we're doing in financial services and make sure that we can continue to innovate and lead in the area of being an international financial services jurisdiction. All of that notwithstanding, I think that many people would have seen and heard the news that there is a particular company called BitCarbon, which has put out advertisements for 16 jobs that they'll be hiring um, in the first quarter of 2019, and a total of 29 jobs that they intend to place in Bermuda. And those applications are currently online, and people can find them at careers.bitcarbon.com. So I think that this is something that is a positive step in that direction, and we expect that there'll be many more to come. 
But as I said today in Parliament, that yes, we have had some issues with advancing Bermuda's fintech ambitions. And that is around the area and provision of banking. I was speaking to someone who set up a fintech company in Bermuda, and it took them six months to get a bank account, and they were not able to get a bank account in Bermuda, so they had to get a bank account in Bahamas. We must recognize that the banking issue is something that is holding us back. This is because Bermuda has, in history, has not ever been a banking jurisdiction, so we do not have a wide cross-section of banks. So we're looking at how we can uh, attract more banks here. That's the reason why we passed the changes to the Banking Act to allow for fintech banks. There have been some applications which have gone to the Bermuda Monetary Authority for these banks, and we are working through that process. Once we get additional banking options that are comfortable with the risk and understand the, uh, what digital assets are and how they can be banked, I think that you will see an uptick in this particular industry. But it is a work in progress. We've been at it for 11 months. The jobs are now beginning to bear fruit, and we expect that there'll be more jobs that will bear fruit in the future. But if in order to accelerate this, we have to deal with a banking issue, and we're working with a number of partners, and we are hopeful that shortly we'll have some positive news to announce in that area. As we get into this legislative break, give us a report card on your feelings of how government has done in this past session and what you look forward to moving forward. Well, there's a number of bills that we passed in this uh, particular session which are continuing to carry out the promises of which we had stated inside of our election manifesto. And so if you look with what we've managed to accomplish in our first 17 months, I think that we've done a relatively good job. But the challenge really is, Dennis, is that there are people who do not have feel that the government is taking care of their particular needs. And I can understand the reason why. And that is because when you're leading an international financial center, there are a lot of pieces of legislation of which have to be tackled in order to maintain the ratings which we had. We spoke in the throne speech that a full third of the legislation that we did in the last sitting of Parliament was to make sure that Bermuda got excellent marks in its AML assessment. That has now passed. We've managed to deal with the challenge of EU tax reform. We will soon be considering the Economic Substance Bill, which is to deal with the uh, issue of uh, the EU Code of Conduct Group, and we've gone past the issue of our AML assessment. Now it's time, and as you see, when we're talking about the things which were laid out in our throne speech, such as tax reform, such as health care reform, such as a living wage, such as making sure there's fairness and equity when it comes to energy taxes. These are things that matter. These are things that people want us to deliver on. And those are the agendas of which we're going to be focused on in the upcoming sessions of Parliament. If you look at all of what we've managed to do to make sure that Bermuda remains a solid financial center, that is what we've done. And now it is important time after the research of which we've done and the consultation that we do, it's now time to turn to the execution for the agenda for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. As we go into this Christmas break, what are you looking forward to doing with the family? and give us a little message for the people to meet. Well, uh, as we go into the Christmas holiday, the thing that I would say to all persons is make sure that you're safe. Think about those that are less fortunate with you and enjoy time with family. I'm hoping that I'll have some time off. However, as I'm going to be on island for this particular Christmas, as opposed to with my wife's family in California, I don't think that I'll get as much rest as I'm used to getting as when I'm away. But what I will say is that it is my hope that everyone takes time with family, takes time to share, takes time to love, and enjoy the family and celebrate those that you have that are with you because they may not be here forever.